So y'all really thought you heard the last of me. You thought you heard the last of me when it comes to Hosier. Did I say that right? Yeah, I said that right. Yeah, y'all thought you heard the last of me. Well, you didn't. Hello, my name is Charles and welcome back to my channel. Or if you are new here, you know, as I said, my name is Charles and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be listening to Hosier's second album, um, Wasteland Baby. And after his first album, I was like, do I want to listen to this album? I don't know. But then after seeing a lot of people's reaction to my first album review, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let the people and, you know, that first album also deter me from listening to the second album. I mean, Jesus Christ, the amount of like dislikes on that video. I was like, y'all, I did not know Hosier fans were that frenzy, that rabid. But I was like, you know what? I'm still going to listen to the second album because I do like Hosier as a person, so I was like, let me just listen to this, because he only has two albums out anyway. Will this virtually be like a redux of me listening to Hosier's first album? I mean, I don't know, but we're about to find out. Before I get into this whole album reaction, I'm just gonna say you should subscribe to my channel if you like music reactions, and I also talk about movies and Blu-rays and other things on this channel, so, you know, if any of that sounds interesting to you and you like my personality, then, you know, subscribe, because, you know, why not? Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into this whole album reaction now. So this album is 14 songs long and a little over 57 minutes long, so... I don't know. I don't know, maybe I might feel like it's a bit too long, especially since I thought Hosier's self-titled album was way too long. So, oof, we'll see. We'll see how I feel about this. So the first song on the album is called Mina Cried Power featuring Mavis Staples. Did I get that right? Yes, I got that right. So yes, that is the first song. It's the heat that drives the lights, the fire it ignites, it's not the way and it's the right. He really does have amazing vocals. Love the background vocals from the choir. Is it a choir? I think it's a choir. Ooh, the raspiness in his voice. Ooh. He's like, wow! <laughs> Who is this Nina? I'm gonna look it up after this. Is this Mavis? Has she been in the song this whole time and just interwoven with Hosier's vocals? Interesting, if so. Ooh, God. His vocals. They're getting me. Okay, so that was Nina Cried Power, and what an interesting way to start this album off. So when I was listening to the song, I was like, okay, who is the titular Nina? And as I kept listening to the song, I was like, these names I'm hearing, I'm like, the name that really like jumped out other than, you know, Nina being said, because, you know, Nina is the titular person in the song, was um, Joni. And I was like, huh, Joni. Why does this name sound so familiar? And as I kept listening to the song, I was like, hold up. So I'm assuming he's talking about Joni Mitchell, which means all these other people he's listing with Joni and Nina must be people too. Seriously, by the end of the song, I was like, so I'm gonna assume the titular Nina is Nina Simone. Cause I was like, if we're gonna go all the way back to Joni Mitchell and people in that time period, that means that the Nina must be Nina Simone, you know, in my mind. Cause I'm like, I'm pretty sure they were around-ish, maybe a few decades apart, but I was like, I know they must have been around the same, like, you know, kind of time period, you know, in the century if like, sense, you know? Yeah, I just had to look on Genius to make sure I was on the right track of this song, and looking at it now, it, there's a note that says, um, in many ways, this song is a thank you note to the legacy of artists from the 20th century whose work still inspires us and whose well we draw from in times of uncertainty. And personally, I've heard a few songs from Nina Simone, and I've heard quite a little bit of Joni Mitchell, which is why I'm just like, this really does make sense to what this song is trying to say. And I'm just like, okay, I like it. And I really like the song in general, not only for the message it's trying to convey and the tribute it's making to these past artists, but you know, I just really like the sound of it. Hosier's vocals were amazing, and I did like the production, so 
Yep. The next song in the album is called Almost in parentheses Sweet Music and I've actually heard this song before. I saw that Hosier um, posted like a video to his Twitter about him like singing this song in the subway in New York City and I was like when I first heard it I was like whoa this is amazing this is what is this song and it took me a while to figure out what the song was called and then when I heard the studio recording of it I was like ooh ugh like the studio recording of this song does not do it justice, and I feel like that's a lot of Hosier's music in general. I feel like he's more of a in-person live singer than he is when it comes to studio recordings, because his studio recordings, they don't really match up to when I see and hear live performances from him. I'm just like, huh, where is the disconnect? Because I'm just like, he sounds way better like doing live performances. Seriously, he should just do like a whole album that's just him doing live performances or like acoustic. I don't know, just not the studio version because his studio versions come nowhere near as good as he is when he's performing, you know, live. Anyways, let's listen to this song real fast. I've heard it before, but you know what? I'm gonna listen to it again. I mean, I listen to it every once in a while, but I'm just like, ugh, give me like a live version of this to listen to because the studio version just taints my memory of hearing him sing it live. Creeping from the outside, burned out from a joyride. I'm almost, almost me again. She's almost you. Now I wouldn't know where to start. Sweet music playing in the dark. Did I get it right? I don't know. I love the lead up into the chorus, it's always good. I would know where. I would know where. Okay, as I said before, the studio like recording of the song is fine, but you know what? I would rather have like a live performance recording of the song because. Hosier doing the song live is just way better than the studio recording ever could be. Okay, so the next song of the album is called Movement. Interesting sounds to start the song. Was this the name of the EP that came before um, Wasteland Baby? I'm just like, was it called Movement? I don't remember what the EP was called before the actual album came out. He's saying, you move me. <laughs> you are the right of when you move I feel like the song is like sneaky dancing, like we're at night and we're dancing, but in like secret, we're like doing it on tiptoes, making sure there's no sound. That's what this song sounds like to me. Okay. This is a lot of swaying music in my mind. Like we went from tiptoe dancing to we're swaying all together. His vocals on this album so far, very impeccable. I'm just like, ooh, they really used his vocals to the max on this album so far. So that was Movement, and it's an okay song. I mean, it was very interesting, the vibe of it. It's more of a song to vibe to. It's not something like I would like readily put on, but I'm just like, in the album, I'm like, interesting song to vibe to. I mean, looking at Genius, it says that Hosier made this song, like he didn't want to make a dance song, he wanted to make a song about dancing, which I totally get from the lyrics of this song, but I'm just like, huh, very interesting, because like by the end of it, it felt more of like, we were all swaying together, and I'm like, maybe that was his intention, because he, once again, was not trying to write a dance song, he was trying to write a song about dancing, and I'm just like, by the end of the song, I felt like if we were like in a concert, we would all be swaying together at that point in the song. But I was like, yeah, it's an okay song. It's not my favorite on the album so far, but you know what? The vocals on the song really like make the song really good. So I'm just like, it's good, but not my favorite. But the vocals, I will be here for the vocals. The next song on the album is called No Plan. And right now, I really have no plan about what I'm doing with my life. But you know what? I'm here. Okay! 
was not expecting it to like drop like that, but okay. He said, instrumentals coming now. There is no plan, girl. Love this guitar solo. I'm really enjoying the instrumental portions of the song. Mm. I'm getting that, there is no plan. But why? Okay, so that was no plan. And at the start of the song, when the instrumentals dropped, I was like, okay, we are gonna get something hard hitting? Like, surprise, surprise. But then it was not hard hitting. And I was like, okay, see, that makes more sense to me. And listen to the song, I was like, hmm. We really are talking about having no plans and it feels like we're just living, we're just vibing. And then I was like, hmm, maybe this song is more of, uh, you know, we're just here living, like, we're here, like, it's whatever, like, we have no plans, we're just living and living life and all that. And I was like, mood, mood. This song was quite long and I did feel like it was starting to get repetitive, but you know what? When the instrumental breaks happened in the song, I really didn't mind it because I thought the instrumentals were done really well. So I was like, yeah, I'll vibe here and just listen because I love the instrumentals and the message of the song of just like, we're here and you know, it's whatever, let's just live life. And I'm like, girl, I have no plans right now. Like in the terms of like, personal life and also like work career and all that so I'm just like well I'm here I'm here the next song in the album is called nobody and why do I feel like this is going to be very sad okay maybe it's not a sad song yeah maybe it's not gonna be a sad song or maybe it'll be an upbeat sounding song but it's gonna be really sad in the lyrics I wouldn't fall for someone who I thought couldn't miss me. Such an interesting lyric. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Boom. There's like drums, drums, jump, 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 jump. Okay, so that was Nobody, and I really thought the song from like just the name was going to be sad, but it really wasn't in both like the production and the message of the song. Cause while I was listening to the song, I was like, so what is the message we're trying to convey? And one of the lyrics I heard just hearing it like in my ears, I was like, huh, I wouldn't fall for someone who I knew wouldn't love me. Something like that. That was what I heard anyway. And I was like, huh, what are we trying to say with this? And then I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna look at the lyrics. So I looked up the lyrics right now. And the chorus says, I'd be a Paul if I saw you ever try to be a saint. I wouldn't fall for someone I thought couldn't misbehave, but I want you to know that I've had no love like your love. And I'm like, huh. So from that, he's saying that he knows the person that he likes isn't perfect, but you know what, he wouldn't have it any other way. And then looking at like the notes, it says that Hosier was trying to make a song about like, you know, seeing the limitations of love between flawed people. And I'm like, okay, that really does make sense. Like with the lyrics paired with what he was trying to say. Well, I mean, listen to that like chorus alone. I was like, it's obvious, but looking and confirming that that's what the song was about by what Hosier said, I was like, okay, now I understand what this song is about. Overall, I think the song's pretty good. I'm just like, I did not expect it to be so full of life and love. I thought it was going to be full of sadness and all that depression, but I was boo-boo the fool because Hosier said full 180, baby, full 180. So the next song of the album is called To Noise Making. Um, 
in parentheses sing. Oh god. The vocals on this album in general so far, we're about halfway through and I'm like, the vocals are impeccable. I love the choir also throughout this album. The choir comes in for backing vocals every once in a while. I'm like, yes. Okay, so that was To Noise Making in parentheses sing. And I was like, huh, is this song about singing? Ooh, crazy thought. But I was like, they're saying like noise talk. They're talking about, of course, noise making and singing. But I was like, are we talking about singing? And if so, are we talking about exactly what when it comes to singing. There was like a few lyrics like in a row that like made me think that we were talking about the joy of singing, I am pretty sure. And looking it up, the lyrics were, was it that or just the act of making noise that brought you joy? And then it goes into the pre-chorus, which is, you don't have to sing it right, but who could call you wrong to put your emptiness to melody, your awful heart to song. You don't have to sing it nice, but honey, sing it strong. At best, you'll find a little melody. At worst, this world will sing along. And I'm like, so we are talking about singing. And of course, of course, of course, what am I saying? Of course the song is about singing, because the song is titled, you know, to noise making, parentheses sing. But I'm just like, the song, just that little fragment, which I was like, what were they completely saying? Because I felt like I knew what they were saying, but looking up, I'm just like, oh, so we're talking about how just singing like is good and it, how it brings people joy and all that and I'm like even though you're not good at singing it's like who cares because singing as long as it brings happiness to you it's great and I'm just like work work if that's the message of the song anyways love the song and let's move on to the next song which is called as it was okay maybe this is the sad song of the album because I haven't felt one yet Ooh, his vocals sound very different they're not as clear. Interesting choice, production. Oh, now his voice is coming in more strong. Dead silence, basically, other than the lone instrumental. Okay, we're back. I was like, what? This part here, I'm just like, wow. This sounds like horse hooves. It's like clap, 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 clap. Okay, so that was as it was. And listen to the song, I was like, so this is clearly a love song, but I'm like, is it like, melancholy for a reason because that's the vibe of the song for me i was like melancholia i was like feeling very melancholy right now and looking it up it says that hosier wrote the song as a song about returning and it's like about coming back to the person you love and i was like okay yeah work that makes sense but yeah i was like it's an okay song i felt sad listening to it but i was like it's fine because i was like I, maybe it's hard sometimes. Sometimes I don't hear exactly what he's saying. So I didn't really discern that the song was about returning to the person you love. But I was like, okay, yeah, I can see that this is what the song's about. But yeah, I was like, it's a good song, but not one of my favorites, to be honest. So the next song of the album is called Shriek. I feel like we've gotten to the more slow part of the album because the first half of the album felt stronger, but I feel like we're slowing things down, which is fine, but I'm just like, we'll see how it goes. Why does this sound so familiar? Seriously, this sounds so familiar, like I've heard him sing this song before, or something like it. Why do I feel sad? I, I have thoughts. 
So that was Shriek, and listening to the song, I was like, huh, this is the song that I thought nobody was gonna be. A song about sadness, a song about, like, a relationship souring, about, like, that person's kind of, like, honestly with nobody, I thought the song was gonna be, like, there's nobody like you, and how the song that song was gonna be about, like, regretting not having you around anymore, and, like, not taking care of you and loving you enough when you were here like gone and all whatever but this song is legit the song i thought nobody was gonna be so very interesting but yeah this song it was mesmerizing but i don't really feel like it's one that i would return to not because it was like nothing happening or anything like that or that it was like not good i'm just like i don't know it just feels like one of those songs that it's good but i just won't return to it's kind of like ariana grande song ghosting like when I heard that for the first time, I was like, this is amazing. Or like even Taylor Swift's Soon You Get Better. Both those songs, I was like, these are amazing songs, but I can't get myself to listen to the songs anymore because I feel like, I don't know, they're a bit too personal. I don't know how personal this song is to Hosier, but I don't know. The song, it just does not sound like a song that I can make myself listen to really again. I mean, I probably can listen to it again, but I'm just like, it's not something that I want to like listen to because I don't know. It feels kind of too personal, but that's just me. The next song of the album is called Talk. Interesting. His vocals have never sound like this, the ones at the forefront. Very interesting. So that was Talk, and I was like, hmm, this song is very, like, hypnotizing in a sense. And then I was like, there was a line in the song, and I had to look it up. It says, I'd be the voice that urged Orpheus when her body was found. And I was like, huh. So it is something about, like, hypnotizing or, like, directing or, like, kind of maybe even seduction. And, you know, thinking about that, I was like, huh. There was another lyric in the song that might lead me to believe that the song is about like maybe seducing people to get what you want. But seriously, like in the chorus it says, um, I won't deny I've got in my mind now all the things I would do. So I try to talk refined for fear that you would find out how I'm imagining you. Which means that this person is like giving like all these nice talking points and like trying to seduce them with their words but really they have something a little bit more sinister maybe in mind, what they want to do with that person, but they're talking all in all, you know, niceties in order to get the person. So yeah, the song is mostly about, I believe, seduction. I'm pretty sure. Not me looking up what Hosier says the song's about, and it says it's about seduction and about how the protagonist is an unreliable narrator and he does not have the best intentions in mind. And I'm just like, okay, okay. So I was like, Right. I was like, there's something sinister going on here. There's something about seduction. Work. I was like, okay, okay, okay. So the next song of the album is B. Okay, we picked it up with the instrumentals again. And I'm like, so what are we getting? Oh, we're getting biblical. We're getting biblical. Oh, he's saying B, not baby. Did they say never be good to me? Oh, they're saying love or be good to me. Okay. I feel like the song should have been called love or be good to me because they say it a lot in the song. I swear, this would sound so good live. I just know it. Okay, so that was B, and listen to the song, I was like, so this is a song about, like, love, right? About the love between two people, and having that person be as they always been? Like, that's why the song is called B, and not, um, lover, um, what was the lyric? Lover be good to me. But I was like, huh, looking at the lyrics, actually, I was like, huh, hold up. I was hearing some different messages in the song and interesting, interesting to see what they meant. Like I thought I heard something about like 
you know, maybe Adam and something about sin. And looking at the first chorus of the song, it says, be like the love that discovered the sin that freed the first man and will do so again. And then later on it goes, be that hopeful feeling when Eden was lost. It's been deaf to our laughter since the master was crossed. Which side of the wall really suffers the cost? The cost? That cost. And I'm just like, huh, he's mixing in original sin and clearly the talking about the wall is talking about Donald Trump and Republicans in America. And I'm just like, interesting, interesting. 2019 is when this album came out and he probably recorded it in 2018. So interesting, interesting message that he has in this song about love. Anyways, moving on to the next song, which is called Dinner and um, Diatribes. Did I say that right? I don't know. I did say that right. Yeah, I've definitely heard this song before. I think I might have watched the music video. Okay, so that was Dinner and Diatribes, and you know, from the first line of the song, I knew that it was about not wanting to be somewhere because it says, um, honey, this club here is stuck up. And I'm just like, yeah, he's like, I don't like it here. I don't like it here. Also, it says in the notes on Genius that Hosier is crediting the song to the feeling you get when you leave a social engagement that you don't want to be at. And I'm just like, Okay, see, I was right. I was like, this is feeling of, um, let me get out of here. I don't want to be here. But yeah, um, I looked at the music video thumbnail for this song and I was like, oh, Anya Taylor-Joy was in that music video, which means I definitely have watched the music video and heard the song before. LOL, I just re-watched the music video like real fast and I was like, yeah, I do like the music video quite a bit and I do like the song. So yeah, we're going to move on to the next song now. The next song in the album is called Would That I. <laughs> This sounds so good. My God, this is really good. So that was Would That I, and wow, just on the way the song sounds, the vocals and the production, I thought this song was very beautiful. And not gonna lie, the vocals that Hosier was giving and the production really kind of distracted me <laughs> exactly from what was being said. But I was like, it has something to do with love, right? And looking at the lyrics more closely, I was like, oh, so what I'm getting from the lyrics is that it's about love and how love can be destructive at times, right? Okay, I was just like, you know what? Instead of guessing what the song is about, let me just look at the like meaning. And it says that the song is about love and the destruction of love and describes past romances as trees the protagonist use as a shelter and then a new interest as a fire that burns down those trees. And I'm just like, okay, yeah. I, I knew it had something to do with love, but I was like, and destruction, but I was like, oh, okay, because like in the lyrics there's something about trees burning, and I was like, is the tree a metaphor for love or something? A stand in for love? I don't know, but you know what? Just looking at what the song is about makes this a whole lot easier. So yeah, I was like, huh, interesting song, love it. But yeah, moving on now. The next song in the album is called Sunlight. He said, give me that sunlight, that positive energy, all that jazz. No, we're still going choir. Your love is sunlight, so it's everything good, positive, all that. Okay, so that was Sunlight, and 
you know, just listen to the song, I was like, so this is about positive vibes, right? Like how this person's love is like sunlight. It's all about like the warmth and like the positive energy they're getting from them. And then when I looked up like the meaning of the song on like Genius, I was like, huh, apparently this is like the opposite kind of inflection, reflection, whatever, of the song No Plan earlier. And apparently that song was nihilistic and I was like, was it? I didn't feel that, but apparently it was. And I'm just like, the song it says is about how something is like how a person's love can be uplifting and wonderful. And I was like, yeah, so I did understand what the song was trying to convey. I was like, work, work, work. So the last song on the album is the titular Wasteland Baby. And okay, let's see how we're gonna close this album out. Ooh, so we're talking about love again. This album's so full of love. There it is, love. Probably about falling in love. Huh, the song is called Wasteland Baby, so maybe it's about falling in love, like, even as the world is going to ruins. This is just a nice, calming song. I don't know how I feel about it as the ender, but... He's in love with you. You. Okay, so that was Wasteland Baby, and that was an okay track to end the album out with. I feel like, I don't know, how did we start this album out with Nina Cried Power? So that was more of a tribute song, but this song is about like finding love, and even though he sets it on like behind like maybe like the backdrop of like Wasteland Baby, so like something that's apocalyptic or like in ruins, it feels more like a new beginning. It feels like this love he's talking about is something that's good and it's gonna like sprout like a flower. That's what I feel. But I'm just like, as an ending song, as a closer song to the album, I'm just like, mm, I feel like we could have closed it out with a stronger song. I feel like maybe even sun sh Sunshine, Sunlight, the last song before this one, would have been even a stronger closer than this one. Okay, with that, we have finally come to the conclusion of this album and this was certainly a ride. It was certainly a ride for sure. I don't know if it's an unpopular opinion to say this, but I do think that this album, his second album, Hosier's second album, Wasteland Baby, is better than his self-titled album. I mean, I don't know if it's unpopular to say that, but that's what I feel. I feel that the production of this album is better than his first album. I feel like his vocals are even more strong. And I feel like overall this album, even though it's long, like, it justifies the runtime. Like, the last album, there was a lot of dead space in his songs that would just be instrumentals that would be going on and on. And I wasn't even that big of a fan of the instrumental segments of the songs in his last album that would just go on. But here, when there would be like an instrumental break, I was like, yeah, I enjoy it, so I'm just gonna vibe with it. And they wouldn't stay for so long. So I was like, he knew when to like, cut off the instrumentals and be like, okay, let's get back to the singing. Also, I just think that the album overall and the songs in the album just have stronger messages than the messages that were trying to be like, you know, put out in the first album. Like, I could really discern what each song, well, most of the songs were trying to say. And I think he conveyed those messages in pretty smart and interesting ways. I mean, I can see the growth between his first album and second album. And I think that he made enormous bounds between the albums. And I'm just like, yeah. It's weird that this album really didn't get any Grammy nominations, but you know what? He'll try again with his third album whenever that comes out. I mean, I don't think Hozier makes albums that fast. He lives life. He's kind of like Lord, but Lord takes even longer than him. So well, we'll see whenever his next album comes out. Okay, so my favorite songs in the album were Nina Cried Power, Almost Sweet Music, Movement. Yes, Movement grew on me. As I kept thinking about the song, I was like, actually, Movement was a great song, so we're gonna add it into this list. And then um, Nobody, and then To Noise Making Sing, B, Dinner and Diatribes, and then Would That I, which in total uh, is eight songs, so that means I liked over half this album, which for me is a big improvement because um, Hosier's self-titled album, I'm pretty sure I only liked like four or five of the songs on the album, so this is a big step up for me. Tell me down below in the comments what your favorite songs were, and you know what? Be nice, cause like, 
the last Hosier album reaction I did, I was like, y'all are very vicious and tiring on here. You're tired. I'm just like, God, let me just listen to this album and say my thoughts about it. You don't have to like it, but my God, my God. Anyways, you guys, thank you for coming to my channel and watching this whole album reaction. And you know, I will see you in the next video if you're there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go now, so bye.